I haven't gotten to see Avengers yet, so I'm kind of mad at you right now. You'll see it soon enough. I'll go see it again. It's good, though. We, are, we actually already have tickets for Friday night. Well, there you go. No, Hi, it, <laughs> You don't care about anything going else. You just go in there to see Chris Evans. I mean, I guess other stuff will happen that's kind of cool. But he's going to rip logs in half. They could just run two hours of that and I'll be happy. And now, two hours of Chris Evans beating the shit out of logs. Yeah, My shit is worth it. I don't think that would be like a, a blockbuster film, though. You know what? I might pay enough to make it the number one movie of the weekend. <laughs> I would just be in the theater 24-7 watching Chris Evans rip up logs. Not even gonna lie. Oh, dude, I wanted to show you. I picked up, like, the coolest thing while we were on the road. I couldn't find my normal headset, so I found this new headset. And I'll put a little closer so people can see. You know how normal headsets you get, they get all tangled up and you have uh -huh. to spend time untying them? And you know how all the time your shoes come untied of their own volition and you have to, like shoelaces, you have to tie them back again by yourself? I double knot, but yes. Someone made a headset with the cord covered in shoelace. Huh. It unties itself. It works, too. I have not been able to tangle this motherfucker up. It's amazing. It's so simple, and yet it fucking works. I kind of I kind of feel like Mythbusters needs to address this. I'm thinking they need to start making shoelaces out of the stuff they make headsets out of and start making headsets out of the shoelaces because this works. It works fantastically. But then your shoelaces could conduct electricity. Well, no, just the outside. Great. Just the outside cable. Of no, but think of the possibilities. If you could just plug your fucking shoes into a USB port and charge them, and they could be hover shoes or laser shoes or whatever other kind of shoes, or like you could charge your fucking iPhone on your shoes. Laser shoes. Yeah. Laser shoes. You kick a man in the balls and it cuts him off. Yeah. They're asking where Miracle is. Miracle's upstairs asleep. <laughs> Miracle doesn't give quite much quite as much of a fuck. No, Miracle's an old lady. She's twelve. So she's, like, she's fuck you know, off. So she's upstairs sleeping. She was like, don't bother me. I'm sleeping. So. so this week we have quite a lot of, well, I, I guess advertisement problems. Oh, are we doing the Bud Light thing? Oh, uh, they just spoiled it for people. Spoiler alert! Yeah, we have a little bit of advertisement issues plus our normal crazy stuff, but not just the Bud Light. The Bud Light, that's just the opener. Oh, God. Uh, the Chaser's much worse. Let me get the, um, the intro going. Oh, God. Get a kitten. All right, you guys have to stop hating on my cat. She's a really great cat. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And yes, as Tara sort of gave away there, spoilers, our very Ooh. first story comes to us from Bud Light. Yes, Bud Light, America's least favorite alcoholic beverage. So, and, and I want to preface this by saying, I just read a book last week while I was uh, on set, so we had some time between shots. A book you probably should read. I'm being a little serious now. It's called Mazzola. And it's about college rapes and all sorts of that stuff going on in America right now. It's a really interesting book. Very factual, very chilling, very terrifying. And a lot well-researched, interesting. And it, was, it, it debuted to a lot of reviewer fanfare last week because this is an important book. You should read it. And then this week, Bud Light proves exactly... 
why that book exists. Bud Light apologizes for removing no label. Bud Light is bat peddling after upsetting people with a label saying the beer was the perfect for t was perfect for temporarily removing the word no from the drinker's vocabulary, invoking concerns about alcohol-fueled rape culture. Anheuser-Busch swiftly apologized Tuesday as after images of the label spread online. The full label reads, quote, the perfect beer, and I'm going to show everybody, for removing the word no from your vocabulary for the night. Now they do have, they have a, a kind of cute commercial for this ad campaign where they have a guy like play live Pac-Man. Have you seen this commercial? No. They like, the, the woman says like, if I give you a free Bud Light, will you be up for whatever comes next? And he's like, sure. And they end up running him into this obstacle course that is a maze with dudes dressed like ghosts from Pac-Man. Yes, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, and he has to be Pac-Man. And that ad's pretty cute, but... This... So I guess they're going for, but the whole... removing no from the vocabulary, because, like... Yeah. Cheap, shitty beer is a college tradition. And Bud Light is cheap, shitty beer. Oh, God, is it cheap, shitty beer. Yeah. So... You know, maybe should have thought that through. People are also pointing out that uh, Midnight Storm and a couple others are saying, even without the rape connotations, this is a stupid idea. Yeah. And it's right because, well, the stories of Hold My Beer are numerous right. and there legendary. There are lots of things that you should say no to. Yes. Like driving a car when you're drunk or keg stands in general, because that's the thing I don't get. The keg stand. Well, What's the point of the keg stand? I don't know to asphyxiate, I guess. I don't know. Or anything involving fire when you've been drinking. No. You know, there's lots of things you should say no to. It's not like, yeah, it's rapey, but it's not the only problem with it. Well, just it it's one of those things where we've we've this has been a problem. A big problem for America that you have the right to say no. And an ad yeah. campaign that says, well, we'll just take that away. That's remarkably tone deaf. I mean, yeah. Jesus, God, God. And I don't know that I've seen before an alcoholic product basically using as its ad campaign that you will get fucked up. Like, generally, yes. they try to convince you it tastes good or that fun people drink it or whatever. But, like... I've never seen them be so direct about this will fuck you up. Yeah. And you will lose your inhibitions and do stupid shit. Like, I mean, I guess kudos to them for being honest about what we all already know, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone so blatantly advertising an alcoholic product that way. Uh, let's see. What... Usually they try to sell you on some other merit of the product. Like sexy oh. and jobs if you drink wild turkey. I don't think that's necessarily true, but that's what they try to do, you know? Well, it's just, it's, uh, I mean, no one drinks Bud Light for the taste. No. You're drinking it to get fucked up. Yeah. Plain and simple. It's, it's, you know, if you get a 12 pack of this and down. Because doubt... you're at the baseball game and that's all that the vendors are carrying around and you don't feel like standing in the line to get actual beer. Yeah, you're, you're drinking the shit to get fucked up. That's it. That's not what, you, that's not, shouldn't be the selling point of your beer. You know, all the others about the great crafting age, taste, and you've seen that Mia Kunis, or Mila, Mila, Mina? Yeah, that Jim Beam ad? Yeah, so with the, with Why the, is Mila Kunis making whiskey? Is that whiskey. Um, like what? That's such a random ad. I, I saw know. that last week and I'm like, really? She has nothing better to do? Okay. Uh, but, you know, the rape connotations don't stop there, sadly. Nope, it gets worse. So we had the, uh, at this point, the anti-vaccination crowd are getting, they're reaching that weird and desperate level. I actually passed an anti-vax billboard on my way back from Philadelphia this week. Yeah. 
like vaccinations are dangerous. Know the facts. Yeah, I do know the facts. That's why I got vaccinated. Yeah. I well, know that polio blows. That's a fact. Yeah. Well, Australia, it spread to Australia too, as if they needed more. You should be vaccinated against everything in Australia. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? Australia is a place of death. This ad campaign came out in Australia that um, I can't. I, I'm just going to show you guys because fuck's sake. Australia Vaccination Skeptics Network compares vaccines to rape. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, yes. The ad reads, force penetration, really, no big deal. It's just a vaccination needle, and he's a doctor. Do you really, quote, unquote, need control over your own choices? Did I miss where rape protects you from measles? I don't, I don't think it does. Did science I, figure that out and I'm, I missed it? I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm sure that's not a thing. That That's not a thing, Tara. It or doesn't. that not being raped cause, causes autism? The controversial anti-vaccination group has likened vaccines that prevent disease to rape. The Australian Vaccination Skeptics Network posted a black and white image of a woman with a man forcibly holding his, his hand over the woman's mouth on its Facebook page. The poster claims that vaccinations are, quote, forced penetration, states people should have a choice over what goes into their own bodies. It's not the first time the group has made the same comparison. In a tweet in January 2011, the group compared a court ordering a five-year-old girl to be vaccinated to, quote, court orders rape of a child. Almost immediately. So generally, you vaccinate babies. Yeah. What other things do we put forcibly into babies' bodies that they don't choose? Let's see. Medicine. Pacifiers. Uh, pacifiers. Food. Food. Breast milk. Formula. Did you know giving your baby pureed carrots is the same thing as giving as raping her? No. What the fuck? <laughs> We do lots of things to children before they are able to make choices. And we do those things to keep them alive. This is, this is getting to, a, I can't, you can't take this seriously anymore. Well, I guess you can just in the wrong way. This is getting to a crazy point with this anti-vaccination shit. When, when you're, you're <laughs> when you're using, you're comparing a vaccination to rape, not only is your hyperbole way off the scale? You're you're good. No, you're you're like even every even everyone is sitting there going too much. The only way you could fuck this up more is if you said that it was like being raped by Hitler. Not only that, you were you were detracting away from people who have been raped. Yeah, I'm sure they're really appreciating this ad right now. Yeah. Because most of those people are probably like, no, the vaccinations I was cool with. Yes. Not getting whooping cough? Cool with that. Rape? Not so cool with it. This is, I mean, this is, the anti-vaccination people are swaying into PETA territory. Have you noticed no one likes PETA? It's Nobody. The mass celebrities like Pamela Anderson's a big fan of them, and Jenny McCarthy's a big fan of the anti-vaccination crowd. Coincidence? Hmm. I don't really know what to do with that correlation. It's like maybe maybe everyone who's ever been on Baywatch will have one horrible thing they're they're supporting. Maybe that's hey, how that works. Hey, don't hassle the Hoff, okay? <laughs> He's going to be in Sharknado 3. Of course he is. Very excited about it. Of course he is. Uh, we don't know what's in vaccinations. You don't know what's in a banana, motherfucker. I still see he knows motherfucking things. Do you not know what's in a banana? If I mean, you try, if you print it out, 
I dare you to do this. Print out a chemical list of all the chemicals that are in a banana and show it to someone without telling them what it is. Well, yeah. I mean, you have you had the whole thing where people were like, oh, my God, have you heard about? Oh, God, what's it? What's the formula? I flunked chemistry. Dihydroxy monoxide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I won't do that. Yeah, it's water, you dumb shit. I like the makeup business. You always have people that are like, I want something with no chemicals. And you're like, really? Because water is a chemical. Air is chemical. You Fucking are chemicals. The universe is a chemical. You are Not chemicals. chemicals in it. Okay. Sure. You have a Here's the anti here's the newest antimatter mascara. It's the it's the hottest thing. You have a bag in your chest. That is full of some of the most dangerous chemicals on the planet. If you were to spill the contents of which on someone, it would seriously burn them. It's kind of fucked up when you think about it. Yeah, isn't it? Because why would it burn us on the outside, but it's cool on the inside? You ever oh, think about that? Because there's a lining in your stomach that's consistently being well, eaten yeah, away and I regenerated. Know. Yeah, I know, but that's kind of fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it is. Let's get back to our regular type of fucked up. We have many... We really went on a tangent there. We did. And I didn't even tell the story. Okay, so, you ever been stuck on the side of the road, like you're, you're out of gas or car has a problem? You ever been stuck there? What do you do? Um, well, I have AAA, so I call AAA. You call somebody. And usually a very nice man in a tow truck rescues me. Or, if, what if your phone's dead? What do you do? Turn on your emergency lights, maybe? That's an option. Hazards rely on the kindness of strangers and pray I don't get murdered. How about set the set the woods on fire? Did that ever occur to you? No, because Police. then you're stranded in near a fire. Police arrest Although you. I guess it would. Police arrest a Utah response? man who lit brush fire to signal for help. Police in Utah arrested a 25-year-old man on suspicion of arson after he told officers he lit a brush fire that burned dozens of acres, and acres are big, to signal for help after his car got stuck. Sheriff's office says deputies, local uh, firefighters, and Bureau of Land Management workers responded to a report of Monday's blaze which destroyed up to 40 acres of old growth cottonwood trees and other, the other vegetation and threatened several structures. In the statement, the sheriff's office said a vehicle had become stuck near where the fire started when the driver had tried to turn around on the hillside. The driver, Weston Frank Vetter of Green River, Utah, told law enforcement he had started a fire as a signal for help. Which is a totally appropriate thing to do if you're marooned on a desert island. Or if you've just escaped, I guess, Area 51 or something. Like, generally, signal fire is much more useful if you're trying to be found by air. Yeah. If you're just on the side of the road, someone's going to drive by eventually. And this time of year, it's not exactly freezing. Like, I've been stranded when it's 19 fucking degrees out. And because of that, I always keep a blanket in my car now. It's not like you were going to freeze to death and you're a dude, so you can pee outside. So <laughs> I love that little addition. And you're a dude, so you can pee outside, you know. It's true. That's tougher if you're a chick. <laughs> Jesus Christ. 40 acres. That's a lot. That's a big ass bunch of and it was like set buildings on fire too. Dude. Smokey the Bear says get, get fucking triple A. <laughs> Smokey says, What the fuck are you doing? What did I tell you? What the fuck did I tell you? This is the point at which Smokey Bear just fucks you up. Yeah, this he comes out of the woods and fucks you up. With the shovel, he's like, let's go, motherfucker. Guys, can we not make 40 acres in a mule jokes? 
Yeah, let's let's not. Don't do that. Uh, really? Really? That's where you went with that? No. No. Yeah, no. No, I just it this is You could have walked. You well, could have walked. I mean, it's, no, it's I mean it's Utah. Technically that's a desert climate and he could have been far away from something. So you don't want to just go wandering around in the desert. Like that's not safe. You want to stay with your vehicle. But chances are someone's going to come by. Eh. You also don't want to just set shit on fire in a desert climate. What's the worst that could happen, huh? Giant well, fire? Yeah, giant ass fucking brush fire. Which could spread to you and kill you while you're waiting for help. Someone's pointing out 40 acres is 1,742,400 square feet. That's almost Jesus. 2 million square feet. On fire. Because you decided to drive your car off-road. Congratulations. Yeah. Just carry a phone if you're going to do stupid shit. And a charger. Oh my God, carry a phone charger. Jesus. Well, we have more driving shenanigans this week, only this time... Wow, this is... This is kind of one... This is kind of great, honestly, in an awful way, and yet still amazing. I kind of love this story. It's from Scotland. Dog driving tractor ends... About how you'd expect. Four-year-old collie named Don took matters into his own paws Wednesday morning while accompanying his driver, 77-year-old Tom Hamilton, in a tractor ride at Hamilton Sheep Farm in Abington, Scotland. I was out in the mini tractor and had stepped out of it to get a lamb, which looked like it was about to get out of the gate. When Hamilton turned around, Don leaned on the tractor's controls causing it to barrel down a hill, smash through a fence, and speed onto a highway, where the vehicle crashed into a median. Dawn was uninjured and no humans were hurt, but the crash did cause traffic delays. And the tweets are amazing. This came from Scotland's official traffic control, you know, the traffic reporting. Quote, due to dog taking control of tractor, nope, not joking, Farmer and police had seen. <laughs> that doesn't look like a collie. Well, maybe he's a mix. It does look sheepish, though. Oh, look, look at that picture. Look at him. That is the Sorry. ultimate dog shaming picture. Sorry. I stole a tractor and drove onto the highway. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is dog shaming take to, taken to the next level. At least nobody was hurt. Yeah, even the dog. The dog got out of it fine, which is Imagine like... Imagine being that farmer, though. Like, you stop for a second, and next thing you know, you're just gone. Well, he's 77 years old. For The first thing I'd be thinking was, did I bring the tractor with me? The second thing would be, I'd be thinking was, no, I ain't running after that thing. Fuck it. I'm too no. old for this shit. Not running after it. The dogs, the dog stole my tractor. Why didn't you do something? Fuck you. That's why. And luckily, there's photographic evidence, so people don't accuse him of dementia, because that's the kind of thing like <laughs> the dog stole the tractor and they put you away. <laughs> Martha, the dog stole the tractor. Hello, mental health services. Right. It's time for Grandpa to go away. No, the dog stole the fucking tractor. It's down the fucking highway. It's a really, really bad Scottish brogue. I know, I know. I should get Jill on here and have her do old Scottish man. Jill, I can't do Scottish. You do Scottish. You do old Scottish man for me. Oh, it's a border collie. Okay. I'm thinking like last thing. They have to. They have to. What? You know how dogs are when you roll down the window. They love to stick their head out. Ah. Uh, you have to think the dog was like, this is the best day of my life. This is awesome. Until he started hitting things. <laughs> well, in tractors, like, it's pretty amazing he wasn't hurt because look at that thing. It doesn't have doors. No. 
tractors are not enclosed things because they only go so fast and you're not really taking them on the road. So like, thank God the dog didn't just tumble out of this thing and get fucking eviscerated. Uh, puppy, don't do that. Yeah, but the puppy was probably like, this is the best day of my life. <laughs> We're on an adventure. Oh, and wise guy points out, you gotta figure people on the highway were like, am I seeing this shit? Yeah. Well, you know, every time you're stuck in traffic, you're thinking like, this better be fucking amazing. At <laughs> this time. There, better be fucking amazing. And you get up there and you're like, you know what? I am not disappointed. That was totally <laughs> worth it. Although imagine you're late to work. You're like, yeah. Um, it was a dog driving a tractor. You're fired. Oh, I hear the kitty. So we have we have an unfortunate recurring segment on this show, which is known as Your Gun is Not a Remote Control. Oh god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello, Miracle. Hi, baby. Oh. She's looking for attention, but Dan has fallen asleep at his laptop. <laughs> Kitty, come here. Hey. She's like, why is nobody on the couch? This is bullshit. But I, she can't hear. I love she has this matter of fact meow. She's like, meow. Yeah. Meow. Meow, motherfucker. <laughs> She's so sad. <laughs> She just spotted me. Come here. Oh, I can't come over there right now, baby. And daddy's sleeping. <laughs> Show call on account of cat. Don't grunt on me. She just grunts at you if you don't do what she wants. You're just going to sit there and pout? That's what you're going to do? Okay. You sit there and pout. So we, okay, sorry. Let's continue. We have the term helicopter parents. Now we have the term shotgun grandpa. Man pulled gun at softball game because his granddaughter didn't play. This is, this is from the 911 call. We've got a parent just pulled a gun at a softball game. He's leaving the Chandler softball field right now. Frantic 911 call came just minutes after a girls league softball game ended. When one Davenport player didn't get put in during a game in Chandler, police say her grandfather wasn't happy. They say Troy Gibbs, 45, started fighting with the coach and other parents. He then went to his car, came back to yell again to yell at the coach. Police said when another parent stepped in, Gibbs pulled out a gun and pointed it in his face and at children in the parking lot. Oh, no, 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 that is not acceptable. Hi! Miracle agrees. I needed attention. Nobody was paying attention to me. It was horrible. What do you, excuse me. She has to be comfortable. Yes. I hear the auto play going. This, this is one of those... Okay, sometimes life doesn't go your way. It happens. Yeah. You can deal with it like a grown-up person, by which I mean you have a conversation, you express your displeasure, you may even throw in a, a few colorful adjectives here and there. It's auto-playing and it won't let me stop it. Stop! Stop oh. auto-play! Okay, there we go. However, when you feel the need to include a gun in a situation, you better have a goddamn good reason. Yeah. Because Susie didn't get a turn at bat. Put me and coach are ready to play? Not a good reason. Not a good reason. And you have just taught your grandchild that this is the way you solve problems. If people. Now, honey. If people won't do what you want, go and get mm -hmm. your gat. 
and gun at them. America! Guns are not a remote control for life. You can't just point them at people and get them to do what you want them to do. There are laws against that. Yeah. For a reason. Yeah. We have all pretty much decided as a group that you're the asshole. Yeah. Stop that is not an appropriate response. Can you imagine the poor kids on the other team? It was like, we're sorry. We'll lose next time. We promise. God. Ooh, you are shedding your leafy brush. I can even see, like, flickers of her hair on the camera. Can you really? It's just flying everywhere. You need a brushing, baby girl. Like, I don't care. Will you uh, stop moving? I want to be comfortable. The fact that we move at all is the bane of her existence. She gets very upset. I, this is, now this is one of those things where, my God, had that thing gone off, this could have been a fucking tragedy. Yeah. You're pointing it at children? What the Who fuck is wrong children? with you? Yeah. I How mean, fuck just. you have to be to point a gun at children in defense of your child? Isn't the rule never point your, your gun at something you don't intend to kill? Isn't, isn't that like the general rule? As far as I'm aware, yes, that is the general rule. Don't don't ever Even part of the part of the thing with all the riots that have been going on is like when it happened in Ferguson, the guns the cops have their guns trained on the protesters and yeah. they're not supposed to. They're supposed to have them pointed down until they intend to shoot something. Right. And you know, of the things I think you should intend to shoot, a girl softball team is not one of them. No. Don't, don't put, point your fucking gun at a girl soft. What the, to be Jesus Christ. You remember, I remember when I used to play t-ball. I played t-ball because I was awful at sports and I could never hit anything thrown at me. Do you know what t-ball is? Oh, yeah. T-ball is for the kids who can't play softball or baseball. It's when they get this big plastic base and they, yeah. they actually leave the, it's like a giant golf tee for baseball. Yeah. They put the bait, the ball right there, and even then I couldn't hit the fucking thing. Oh, no. But even then, you know, at the end of the game, what you do is you get in the line, and you slap everybody's hands, and you say, good game. You don't pull a gun! No. You know, sometimes I didn't win baton twirling competitions. You know what my parents didn't do? They didn't shoot the judges. No. Or the girls that beat me. That would have been a very different kind. That would have been a Hunger Games competition almost. My last one tonight is now I really, I try to avoid doing stories where people get hurt. Unless, number one, they're going to be okay. And number two, it was their own stupidity that caused it. And in this case, <laughs> he's like, stop moving. Stupid talking pillow we're very disobedient furniture now there's an old old you know the frog and the scorpion aesop fables like why did you sting me it's in my nature that story did not involve you know tongue Florida teen recovering after water moccasin bite to his face. Now, your first thought is, oh, no. Oh, God, this poor kid got bit by a water moccasin. No, no. Read further. A Florida teenager is recovering after being bitten in the face by a water moccasin. The bite occurred happened last Saturday, according to investigators. Two days after Austin Hatfield, 18, captured it in his girlfriend's yard in uh, Wimala. Wamawa. I think it's Wamawa. Wamawa? One of Hatfield's friends, Jason Belcher, was there when it happened. Belcher said the snake was initially in a pillowcase. He took it out, put it on his chest, and it was acting funny, and it jumped up and got him. Well, yeah, they get pissed off when you do that. All right, you want to go down? Apparently, according to a couple of other reports... He had been trying to kiss it. 
Oh no. They don't like that. Kitty, don't wake him up. She can't hear me. She doesn't give a shit. Water moccasins and rattlesnakes are the and the I think it's the king cor the king snake, coral snake or king snake. They look the same. I forget which. Those are the dangerous fucking snakes in the American Southeast. You learn this shit. You're just watching <laughs> for him to wake up, wake up for the cat. I entertained her as long as I could. Oh dear. He's like, what God? No cat. These are these are dangerous fucking animals. I remember I was shooting uh, one of my videos a while back. I did some a bit in the woods, and I ran up on a water moccasin once. Just me and my dumbass camera, and a water moccasin went, ah, and I'm like, I'm cool. I'm gonna leave you alone. Are you gonna be cool? And he was like, ah, I was like, I'm going now. Ah, yeah. okay, that's nice. Either you're a water moccasin, or you just got a vanilla milkshake at McDonald's. Either way, I'm leaving. Bye-bye. See a bunch of little Fonzies. Yeah. What's Fonzie like? Cool. You don't play with these things. No, you don't put keep it in a pillowcase and then take it out to play with it. Would you like to see why you don't play with these things? I I'm going to warn everybody. You may um, want to look away on this one. Do, do you want to see why you don't play with these fucking things? Let me show you. That is why you don't play with them. Not see. Oh. oh. Yes. Yeah. Don't do that. Because they, they are one of the, the deadly snakes. The ones that will go fucking kill you. I was taught that since I was a small Don't piss child. Off the nature. Huh? Don't piss off the nature. And you want to know, you all, oh, here's, here's the bad part of this. You want to know, it wasn't the snake's fault. The snake wasn't doing anything but minding its own fucking business and hanging out. But you know what happened? Investigators say the snake was euthanized in order to, tr to identify it and treat the bite. You jackass. That snake was someone's baby. I don't feel sorry for you fucking with the snake and put it on. Try to kiss a snake. Why did they have to euthanize it to identify it? They have to not... be sure what kind of, if they give you the wrong type of antivenom, it can kill you. Well, right, but are we not able to identify a live snake at this point? I don't know. All I know is they take, they're, they're careful about that shit. But seriously, I mean, at what point is your survival instinct just shut the fuck off? This is not how you do the Kendall Jenner lip challenge. Oh. You know oh. about this, right? Yes. Like the glass. girls are totally fucking up their lips. Yeah. Yeah. They actually make a thing for it. I got an email that there is now a specialized tool you can buy to do this to your lips. It looks like a little red, like, ovular cup and you're supposed to create suction to plump up your lips and i'm like it's the dumbest shit i've ever heard why would yes. you do that like i have t tiny fucking lips there are nothing to write home about but i'm not doing that no that's dumb i mean jesus god i was taught when i was a very small child which animals were dangerous that could potentially kill me. I was in Boy Scouts and shit. I knew all this stuff. I, Whenever I saw a snake, my first impulse was not, oh, I'm going to go up and fuck with it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, generally, unless it's, like, this big and bright green, just don't fuck with that snake. No. I, garter I, snakes look friendly. Like, you can tell they're not going to fuck you up because they're like, hi. I'm what a tiny green snake. I just want to eat your plants. And you're like, okay, fine. <sighs> Unless they're like that, 
You just leave them alone. Yeah, when they make those noises and rear back and show you their fangs and like that that's that's not, yeah, that's not them being friendly. That's snake for fuck off. Mm-hmm. Why would you that the I could I just the idea of putting some random wild animal up to my face, snake or not. Just like you know what I think the problem is. I I don't particularly like it when the cat sneezes on my face. You know what I think the problem is? Bear Grillis. And what's it? The fucking Turtle Man, too. Have Has, you seen the Turtle Man? No, I haven't. Oh my god, he's every redneck cliche ever. And the whole thing is, he's an animal trapper. So, like, if you have an angry badger trapped in your barn, you call this guy, and he and his camera crew come out, and he makes a lot of annoying sounds and traps the animal. And it's all totally staged. Like, they got exposed for actually releasing a bunch of poisonous snakes onto a children's camp so that he could film. Yeah. yeah. I remember Bear Gryllis, though. Bear Gryllis was different because he he was like, there's, look at this animal. It's amazing. It's like, and, okay, now I'm going to fucking eat it alive. Look, here's a giant frog. I found this frog. A lot of protein. Arr, 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 arr. You ever watch Man vs. Wild? It was fucked up. If it would hold still long enough, Bear Grylls would put that shit in his mouth. Did you ever see that episode of Fear Factor where they had those giant spiders that have the hingy arms and they made people eat those alive? No. No, I didn't And not. one chick tried and like they, they, they're like spiders that are like the body is like this big. And then they have these two arms that ah. are like crab because they're like hinged and they have pincers and this one chick like it grabbed the outside of her mouth and she was like fuck this I'm out you can keep your 50 grand assholes so I guess the first thing we learned this week is wild animals don't put them in your mouth or near your mouth or don't try to kiss them no they don't want your kisses you know at least buy them dinner first maybe I don't know we've learned yet again can't stress this enough a gun is not a remote control for the really real world. No, no, it is not. Also, you know that old song, teach your children well? You're not. You're no, really not. You're child to be an asshole. Good job. We've learned if you take your dog out for a drive, keep an eye on the fucker because he might steal your ride. Yeah. He might go on a joyride in your tractor. That's a country song. That, that's a country song in the making. My dog took a joyride in my tractor. Hey, you know, the whole time the dog was just thinking, I'm a dog. I'm a dog. This is great. I'm a dog. We've learned that if you get stranded in your... We should ask Todd if Kali's ever stolen the car. That would give him a total existential crisis. They have that little smart car, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. She could get, she could totally, well, I don't know if she could fit in it. It's a little small for her. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we've learned that if you ever get stranded on the roadside, there are many ways to signal for help. Setting the world on fire is not one of them. Not a good one. Don't do that. Set the world. I, I don't want to set the world on fire, but I just did. <laughs> that was a good song we've learned that uh, vaccination whatever your stance on it don't invoke rape imagery to support your side of the argument here's the thing unless you're talking about rape don't invoke rape that's Just, easy isn't it like that's a really sensitive topic and unless you are literally talking about rape don't invoke rape. Just yeah. don't. Yeah, it's 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 not there for your rhetorical purposes. Rape is out of the rhetorical category. It's it's in it's on the shelf. You can take it down and use it when you're old enough. <laughs> when you've shown that you're responsible. Right. Right. It's when you have to, you know, you have to grow up a little to be able to talk about the subject. Otherwise, if you can't, leave it the fuck alone. And finally, we've learned marketing people really... What? You can't hear him snoring, can you? No. Okay. <laughs> Although, if you bring the microphone and put it closer, we might be able to. 
he and the cat are now happily sleeping on the couch. She woke him up to curl up with her on the couch. She always gets her way. Finally tonight, we've learned that marketing people, again, run run your marketing slogans by a 14-year-old first. Yeah, I don't know that that one would have made it, though. Really? I don't know that that one would have pinged. Because either the 14-year-old wouldn't get it, or they'd be like, yeah, no, that's awesome. 14-year-olds are little shits, man. I'm sad now. <laughs>